Hey everybody, this podcast is proudly sponsored by CardsReviewRelease.com. CardsReviewRelease.com has been supporting the game since Opus 1. Use promo code CHOKABROS to save 10% off your next order. Hello, 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 and welcome to another week of the Chocobros. I'm your host this week, Zach Burrell. And I'm Cody Snodgrass. And we are Samless this week, but we will hold down the fort while he is out and talk about uh, the Earth Cup start off. So I have not looked at the results at all, uh, but I'm kind of hyped to see because I like yeah. tournaments that aren't from the U.S. because I feel like the U.S. I know kind of most of the players and what they play, but Europe I feel like I see a lot of new names recently anyway. Like, I haven't seen a lot of like Jamie Faulkner recently, like old names that like I would be used to seeing a lot. Um, so I've enjoyed the variety. Uh, like what's the guy who's been tearing it up? Is it Fabian? Is his name? Yeah, yeah, Fabian. Yeah, he's, he's been, been just killing demolishing it. people. Yeah, yeah. I think he won the Grand Open. Uh, a few weekends back, mm-hmm. and then I know he made top cut at Ben. Oh, Lux, actually, I, I did see the finals of this tournament, so I do because he was in the finals against Ice Earth, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I did see the very end of game three of this series, but or game two, whatever the last game of the series was. <laughs> oh, okay. But, yeah, unfortunately, right. I missed out on the stream, but I'm looking at the top eight deck list now. So. Oh boy, there's a modifier deck. <laughs> Yeah, that was the exciting part. So there's three Ice Earth. Uh, (laughs) Let's click on these. So the first Ice Earth, interesting that they're playing Nidhogg and not Veritas. How do you feel about that, being Mr. Ice slash Ice Earth recently? Um, I'm completely fine with Nidhogg. Uh, I played it in Tampa, and it was great. And then there's this other one with Cam, Veritas, and Nidhogg. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. That might be a bit much. (laughs) Yeah, that definitely is. Um I think you gotta go Veritas or Nidhogg. And... That spicy deck name in eighth place, though. <laughs> I haven't seen it. That's messed up. Anyway, Let me go back. Uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna read oh. it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're saying. Um, okay, so that one's two Veritas. That's more of what I would expect. Like just Veritas. They're playing a Sal too, which is not everybody's keen on that card. Oh my. Okay, so wait a second. That the fourth place list mm-hmm. its backup line is all earth basically yeah but this is more it's like playing the, um... goomba a summoner and a chaos and then shantoto obviously and it's still playing yeah. two kuja yeah this kind of looks like um a similar list like what brian lou was warning or was mm-hmm. running um i know it was cancer dot deck when he first topped his lq with it yeah uh, and I've seen a lot of a couple different variants on it, so this is interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, it's it's a lot of, yeah, a lot of earth. Lot of earth. earth. It's strange. Like that doesn't seem. I don't know, man. You got some balls. That's all I'll say. <laughs> uh, and then okay, so first place, yeah, the Nidhog. You got the big Sephiroth, two Kuja, which I think he hit both the EX burst that last game, right? If I'm remembering that correctly. Or maybe I'm oh, thinking my sure. experience. That could be a thing. Never mind. <laughs> All right, I, I didn't see any of the streams, so I missed out on that. If that's what you, you said, yeah. Uh, so yeah, then just Jesse and Shen Hodo. Okay, and he's playing two Shen Hodo, which is nice to see. I like, I like not running just one. Okay, so nothing like too surprising there. Vice Kings, yeah, the deck he tore it up with a week or two ago. So then we have yeah. Mono Lightning. So Evan always plays this list, right? He always plays some kind of Lightning. Uh, as far as I know, at least I know he's been very successful with it in the past. He's um, also playing Yuri in, over uh, Veritas, which I, I think I like that, maybe. Because these decks yeah. can be really fast and really aggressive with things like Alba and Illua. So, and Shango, by the way, I dealt with over the LQ. That card is gigantic. Yeah, I, I've always thought when I first saw that card that it would be a solid one-off in Mono Lightning. Um, so, yeah, no surprise seeing that here. Um, I do so like the three Twilight Odin. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's a beast. Um, it's a pretty interesting list. You know what we're saying uh, about the Twilight Odin? Uh, I like Twilight Odin quite a bit, especially you can. There's a lot of different things you can do here. Uh, Diana, yeah, I, I think Yuri along with Twilight Odin is kind of the go-to combo here, right? Like you just you pitch a card well, to activate the Twilight Odin, and you can double dull freeze with Yuri, get through and kill something. Well, also Alba can dull, mm-hmm. which helps. Yeah, I like the list. It's very very simple. A lot yeah. of three ofs in the forward line, which I completely fine with. And Shango probably should just be a one of because you want him yeah. when you want him. But I'm actually the only thing I'm missing in this deck list to make like me really happy would be Zemus. But maybe yeah, he's just kind of a liability. 
Yeah, you beat me to it on that one. Uh, I agree. I think you can maybe cut down on the Alcid package and possibly add Enzima somewhere. Yeah, um, I guess but... Rigdia is maybe too good because of... this deck is very aggressive. So I'm wondering if the... this just like turbo ramp to five backups, which is kind of what you want to do anyway. And then go, yeah, just everything here dulls, basically. Diana gets back Alba, Alba dulls herself, Rigdia kills something and dulls. Illua, I mean, that card's just broken. Uh, Onion Knight combos <laughs> with Alcid, Shango's a giant train. Idea, you're playing Model Lightning. And then Yuri, yeah, it gets things out of the way, Dull Freeze. Then you have, like, he's got all the Ramu as well. That's, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's pretty interesting. Uh, Ramu I, once again, me. Evan definitely knows uh, Mono Lightning more than me and you do, so I'm going to let him. <laughs> my only experience with it is, uh, was my horrible. Uh, Your poor choice. <laughs> yeah, my poor choice for Gen Con last year, so. <laughs> um, um, so then we got Versa King, which looks like. The same Vice Kings list basically is Fabian, maybe? Yeah, I'm not sure if they work together on that, but it is card for card. It is card for same. card? Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, which I think it's interesting seeing that make such a big comeback. Um, Earth, Wind. Okay, so they're playing one Renoa. I like the Spice. I like the Spice. Uh, Ranger I also like because Death Gaze is hard to deal with. And that card... Oh, wait, that card doesn't deal with it, does it? Oh, no, it does. It does. So yeah, being able to deal with Death Gaze is pretty useful, because like, there's some times where you play a valuable forward, they Death Gaze it, and you just never get to see that forward again, because you just don't have monster removal. Uh, so I, I really do like the Ranger, and I kind of wish I had a copy of that uh, this past weekend. Also because it costs two, and we'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, interesting 4 CP Zidane. Yeah, so one 4 CP, and then two 3 CP. Pretty interesting. Um... I think this it's weird is seeing... closer to what I wish I played, but yeah, it's weird seeing no Noctis. Uh, I would definitely yeah. always run three Noctis and Earthwind. Um, it's kind of nice. Well, I won't say nice, but interesting seeing two drop pack hit tons here. Uh, a lot of Earthwind lists have kind of shied away from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's playing um, Vanille, so he's got a. I'm actually surprised right. he's only playing four Hecatons with Vanille. And while I do love me some three CP Hecaton share action, I think. You should probably have the. You should maximize on the two CP first, because removal is well, it's just very good, and this deck's full of things that like you don't mind uh, fighting. Especially like if Zidane yeah. gets pumped to seven K, you just like kill a Genesis with it or something. Like it seems pretty good. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I think with the, uh, I've been seeing a lot of Minwoos start to pop back up in our mono water list. Mm -hmm. um, maybe that's what he was worried about uh, in terms of Hecaton. But this is Europe. Man, they don't play Minwoo. It's a bad card. They, they are, everybody says that <laughs> until it beats them. <laughs> oh, I know. But but we're Americans and we lose to it because it's bad. <laughs> Something like that. All right, let's uh, All right, let's so look at this mono fire. Mono list. fire. Yep, yep. Okay, this so this is Warrior of Light. Yeah, Warriors of Light. Uh, so it's Wall, Aegis, Luna. So it's, it's aggressive, which I guess the like really fast fired mono fire decks are technically kind of the same shell. Like, so it's not necessarily Warrior of Light because Warrior of Light. It just happens to be those are the aggressive cards. Uh, Vermilion Bird, let's see, is interesting. The Pain yeah, Train himself. Yeah, Vermilion Bird, that's probably my favorite fire card of all time. That card's <laughs> great. It's interesting to see on a mono fire list without Libero. Oh, it's actually first. one comment I meant to say about uh, Evan's Model Lightning is I'm surprised that he's playing the 1x death without a copy of uh, that card. Dragoon, Legend, Astinian, that card. The 5 oh. one that just gets to <laughs> crash in. Like, I love, like, whenever I play Model Lightning those couple times a year, uh, I like to have <laughs> the X death plus the <laughs> Astinian combo just because it, it just closes game sometimes and it's real good. Anyway, back to the modifier. Uh, yeah, uh, I, like, I like Vermilion Bird, especially he's. I mean, he's playing Brynhildr, Bahamut, Bahamut. <laughs> Doesn't help with Bellius, but Bellius is there for the aggro. Lulu is a sweet card that I think is underplayed. No, yeah, for sure. It looks like he's based. He's wanting to go for a turn one Archangel HM into Red Maid or Sage, mm -hmm. just to get a ton of early aggression. Yep. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Vermilion yeah. Bird, Zoyu. That's. I haven't it's, seen that in a long time, so... It's interesting that he's running 14 backups, and he still chose to play the 4CP Bahamut uh, that can only be paid with backup CP. I guess he's trying to always do it off of the bird. 
backup? I was going to say, he's only playing one of it, so maybe that's his go-to for Right, that. but, like, a lot of these aggressive decks want to play the, the other one that's, like, the EX Burst. 10k so like if a deck ever flips on them somehow like it stops the aggression there's always a chance that they hit that 10k you end up killing their dude so that you can flip it back on them and get the uh, aggression back but yeah i guess i could see it because the way it's worded it can be cast with uh vermilion bird let's see so mm-hmm. uh you get it just a 10k off of, well 11k off of her yeah i guess i could see yeah, that. i think it, i think it's a pretty fine one of and it removes um, which is nice no, oh, yeah, absolutely. I guess that's actually that might be the argument. Does a 10k one remove? Um, or the, no, the, the I X1, don't sorry? believe so. I know the the other four drop one that he's playing obviously does remove, uh, but I'm not sure about the 10k. Let me. Uh... I don't think it does. Mm, no, it does not. Okay, yeah. so that's a reason then because you want to be able to remove like things like Veritas, so that they don't no, get the yeah, back absolutely. end value. All the Bahamuts are pretty good against Veritas. You always yeah, want to remove the most card so he, so he doesn't get the exit effect. Yeah, but um, there, I mean, Neo Bahamut doesn't do that for them. Uh, and you also don't want to discard your hand, <laughs> typically, unless you're... I mean, this deck has a little bit more of the kind of the mid rangey aspect. Like, it's playing Balgavan, which is... I mean, it's going to kill things, which I guess helps the aggression, but it still costs 5. Vermilion Bird costs 5. Cloud is probably going to be played in the faster decks. Maybe Marsh is now. But there, there are other haste threats they could have, like Tifas. Uh, they could be playing like another splash for like a single Onion Knight or something and cut down on one of the walls. So this is kind of like a w- interesting hybrid between the aggressive and more mid range decks. Obviously, it's not like the mid range control where you're playing like Zonde, but uh, I think I, I I like it. Yeah, I think if I was yeah. going to play Mono Fire, this is the direction I would go. Yeah, I always go as aggressive as possible. Right. Maybe up, maybe up to Belias counter to three. That. Oh. Uh, breakdown by the way ice 152 cards in the top eight the next highest is earth with 62 that's a lot of ice (laughs) a lot of ice for sure oh yeah no mono ice which is a little heartbreaking but i (laughs) I mean come on man ice earth (laughs) yeah it's ice fire uh so speaking of ice fire uh we played an lq this past weekend in orlando at beard collectibles and Mm -hmm. uh ice fire won that event um, shout out to Chad taking second place in a heartbreaking defeat game two, and then a pretty stompy game three. Like he, what was, uh, he, what was Chad on? He was on the spiciest build of scions I have ever seen in my life. Uh, <laughs> he had the three Odin three, like, uh, zero miss, which isn't like super abnormal or anything. I, I don't know if Odin is necessarily played anymore, but the zero miss is, I guess. I think uh, a lot of people have moved to Ramu instead of Odin, but. Yep, so he had those. Then this man was playing three copies of a monster besides Dragon. What monster, if I if I were to ask you right now, think of an... Uh, well, I'll even give you a hint. Think of an off-color monster to run just because it can be brought back with Yurianje. That you have zero other ways to play in the deck unless you draw a second copy of it to get the CP for it. Ooh. Um, and no, it's not Layak. Should have been, but it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, that was going to be my guess. Uh, outside of that, maybe uh, I'll go with Buckaboo. That'll be my guess. Cleone. Oh, okay. This man was playing three Cleone in a science deck. <laughs> that was <a> very, very <laughs> odd. <laughs> it was hilarious. Also, he was playing three EX burst Odin, and therefore he had, I believe it was one copy. I hope it was only one copy of 5 CP Lightning EX that puts an Odin on top from the break zone. Mm. Not, <laughs> not, a, not a fan of that card at all. But very... so he had, it was hilarious. And like, he, I mean, he made it second place. He crushed, I mean, he beat, no, he crushed Andy Carmona in Mono Lightning versus Scions. And he beat, I don't know, I remember what matchup was in the rest of the top eight, but yeah. Crushed it, crushed it, got to the finals, crushed game one. Game two, he bricked three turns in a row, drew, drawing just backups in his 14 backup deck. Uh, and ended up not finding one forward to haste for game. And <laughs> so he got super unlucky there. And then just had a heartbreaking loss after that. And then third game, yeah, he just never really stood a chance. 
um, Ice Fire got going too quick, but congratulations to Sergio for uh, beating it. He also, Sergio's the one who knocked me out in top eight. Um, I was okay. playing um, Earth Wind, uh, except I was playing, of course, Phoenix version, because I can't play less than three colors, I guess. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I, but I wasn't playing Urian J, though, so I had no way I could know Urian J. Um, I had instead three Cactor, one Luminous Puma, one Calbrena. I had a copy of Cloud, Vivi, and then the three Phoenix. Okay. And then the backups were, uh, I actually had Moogle and Semi and Mion, um, which is, I guess, I'm pretty unusual these days, but no other tech uh, wind backups. Um, okay. And then the spicy, spicy one of was Zezet from Opus 7. So the guy who has like four abilities depending on the colors you pick. Mm -hmm. So the idea was I knew it was going into a heavy ice meta, um, and I didn't want to play the Paul from Sam's list uh, and Oki's list because uh, they had Paul, Cloud, Vivi, stuff like that. And they wanted to cut the cam. I'm not cutting the cam. And I said, well, I don't really want to play Paul. What other kind of interesting things could I you know, kind of sneak in there that aren't necessarily common? And Zezet came up because for a wind and an earth, you can activate it forward. And against a deck like uh, mono, either mono ice, ice wind, ice fire, ice earth. All of them are relying to some extent on cards like Genesis, Kuja, Sephiroth, Celeste, dulling and freezing your guys. So if Zezet can activate and block uh, one of their seven Ks, like it's very very good. Um, I didn't get to see it a lot. Uh, when I did see it, it was usually too late, but uh, it did do some work in one game. It helped me close it out because I was able to actually four K an active forward to kill like an Argath or something something else to remove their last guy and get in for a game but uh the reactivation did help in my top eight match against sergio just wasn't enough uh, i think most of it was i just don't really know the matchup well enough i kind of talked to sam a little beforehand about what cards might be valuable but uh it didn't help me <laughs> I, uh, and you were you went against fire ice correct yeah so sergio's on fire ice yep so yeah, my, it's, my it's... uh swiss oh sorry what were you saying no you don't get much time to set up against them um, so, obviously, if you draw Shantoto, you keep that. Mm -hmm. Hope to Shantoto, the early aggression. Yeah. And Dataluma's Sergio played it slow, for sure. Yeah, Dataluma's, like, was my high priority, and I think I probably went too deep game one. Uh, excuse me, assembling Dataluma and Cactor. Like, I used a Moogle special to find a Cactor. Uh, so, and my Dataluma was active, so if he wanted to dull it, he had a target at once, plus I have a Cactor. So I was going to kill something before he died, or before he got dulled. <laughs> uh, but I just, I couldn't assemble enough to get a win out um game one game two i it was pretty i had to play on like two backups and three backups for a while like i never got to really go to um or i'm sorry that was game one or game three uh i did get to five backups pretty quick game two and that's why i won because i was able to just threat hold up cp threat hold up cp threat hold up cp and it went pretty well mm -hmm. um, at one point i had like veritas dot luma zezza and something else on board and like not losing this game <laughs> Like, you have Phoenix and maybe a Vivi to kill. But, like, I also have Semi, so I can just pitch cards to ping. Uh, so nothing dies to Vivi. But, uh, no, my Swiss rounds, though. Round one, uh, just a quick little recap of it. Uh, I went against... We'll come back to round one. Round two was uh, against Alejandro. Uh, I actually got paired down round one. Oh, round one was Mono Water, because I milled him out. Uh, they just okay. they kept on bringing back their Viking, and I just kept killing it with, a, like, a dot of ping. So they were just drawing cards for no reason like sticking a thread or two that I was just pinging down. I got the third Cactor online and it was just didn't last long from there. They didn't have yeah. Minwoo. Uh, yeah, the third so, Cactor is definitely overkill. <laughs> well, there was a turn where I was like, I had Semi and I had uh, Cactor and I was just like, I was kind of pinging stuff down, but I was also trying to play some things because they were getting pretty wide. And there was actually a turn where I did like Fina for nine, kill, reactivate, Dalluma ping, Semi ping to like kill three things or whatever. Uh, but then there was a turn where I went top deck, Cactor, Cactor. I was like, all right. <laughs> just pass. Yeah, so that went to Mill. Uh, just made him draw a ton of cards. And then I had Riku online. Uh, round two was against Alejandro, and I gave him his second loss, unfortunately, because I got paired down because the damage was like three to four or something in the Mill win. So I think that's why I got paired down. Um, hmm. If that's how that works, I don't know. <clears throat> but uh, he was on Ice Earth, bricked bricked hard he ramped out backups got scale toed down i was feeling real bad about the matchup and then he proceeded to discard 
one turn. <laughs> just had names in his hand, apparently, that were all his backups already on the board. So he just literally couldn't play anything. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so Not a good I felt time. really bad about that because he was, like, really down. He's always, ever since the previous weekend in Miami, he's just been like, oh, man, I want to play this deck. I know it's good. Then he got crushed by by Sam in the finals, by Scale Toad. And he's like, oh, man, I'm all about the Scale Toad. And then his deck just, he 0 3 I'm pretty sure, his first three rounds at the LQ and just could not draw out of it. As always, there's probably something he could have been doing different. But, like, for the most part, it was out of his control in terms of just... I mean, he went to discard. Like, oh, just discard an extra Harley. <laughs> so, uh, I feel bad yeah. for him. But, that, I mean, that's how the cards go sometimes. Yeah, some, day, some days you just have the bad days, bad draws, stuff like that. And oh. uh, round three was I lost to Andy Carmona. Uh, he had a disgusting turn. I think it was turn four or five. Uh, we're going back and forth. He plays a few things. I play a few things. He hits me for some damage. I kill his things. But then he went, and I had a Shantoto in hand. He had an Illawan field. So I'm thinking, like, all right, if he commits even a second forward to the board, I'm just going to Shantoto, get rid of the stupid Illawa, uh, whatever else he plays. So I actually played a forward to bait out because I knew he had an Alcid. I didn't know that he was going to top deck an Illawa special, though. So he went Alcid combo. I'm like, yes, Shantoto's going to be great here. Kills my guy. Attacks with Illawa, Illawa special, swings with his other two, puts him to a six. I'm like, oh boy. And then I went Shantoto, uh, cracked Star Civil to play a forward go. And I think it's actually Dada Luma, so I was like, all right, maybe if he has a target or something, I can kill things. And no, I just, I think he ended up being able, I didn't have a Cactor yet, and he ended up being able to go. Um, after he passed, I played a second forward. Excuse me, he went, uh, what's the card? Diana. Get back Alba, play Alba, double both your guys kill you. I was like, oh. <laughs> so I lost that. Uh, actually, the past two LQs, I've went four and one, losing the third round. Fun statistics. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah. Next round, I played against a player on Fire Earth FF7 sort of deck. Uh, he was he was playing well. He was at, we were in the top six, uh, the like the top three tables for the next couple rounds and i saw him up there all day so like all right he knows what he's doing but i just got some good veritas off on him i got some good uh, luma ping combos that he wasn't expecting and i just eventually i drowned him out just kind of like earthwind does to the more fringy combat based decks like that <laughs> uh and then the last round was wild so he i i saw that he was playing a sid 2 deck so i'm throwing a party in my head i'm like it's not science which there were three or four people playing there. It's not Mono Lightning. It's not super aggressive. If he plays turn one Sid 2, yeah, he'll have a good game. But uh, I went into it thinking, all right, we're just going to kind of go back and forth. This man goes turn one, uh, fire back up Paul. I'm like, okay. So I have tap. I'm like, I have to deal with this Paul. I'm like, uh, wind back up, overpay play Noctis, pass. I'm like, all right, so Noctis, he'll hit me once, whatever. I'll deal with it. Untaps, Death Gaze, your Noctis, hit you. Ooh. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> so that happened. And then he, I couldn't deal, deal with it the next turn. Hit me again with Paul. So now I'm 12 cards down from this Paul. Two in damage and 10 in break zone. Finally, I think I end up, uh, I think I should get to Veritas as Paul. Uh, so that went away. <laughs> then he played uh, Maria, Guy, Furion, all these things. These things are like raid bosses. They're like 10Ks. Because uh, I ended up having three forwards at one point. I had like Galdas and like Ishtola or something and like another forward. They were just, it was just kind of a wall. I'm thinking like a Zidane. So there's a lot of math to do and like neither of us wanted to swing, but uh, he was clearly ahead in terms of like raw forward power. But then he dropped the second Paul. And he had Maria on board. So a singular Dataluma ping doesn't kill Paul anymore. I had to Cactor 10k his Paul to not get hit by it. <laughs> <laughs> Which felt awful. But like I couldn't afford to take another one. I looked at my deck, I had like 16 cards left at this point. And I'm like, I need to flip around. Eventually I had a turn where I got to I swung out, he let he took it all. Uh wasn't expecting much. And eventually I, I played Veritas. He had a sack one of his two giant guys. He's down to Maria and a Furion. Uh and then I got to like some I think I Phoenix DB'd his Furion the next turn, killed it, and I swung out and killed him. 
but that game i ended up with like five cards in deck at the end i got hit with paul two or three times like it was <laughs> such a wild matchup and the mind games going back and forth with his like giant 10ks and my like galdas and stuff were pretty crazy yeah, um, getting getting hit by Paul puts you on the clock very quick. So. Yeah, one of my and and it was and it sucked too because like I had the weird like awkward start with Noctis. I'm like I need to just top deck backups now and keep Noctis on board. And his first mill hit I think four backups. I'm like oh no, <laughs> and then his next one hit like three more. I was like oh this is gonna be a long game, but yeah we got there. But it wasn't was not smooth, and we were both like <laughs> we were both like uh, 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 <laughs> trying to figure out the board state. Um, yeah, it was a good time though. Uh, I have one more chance to qualify for nationals, unless Gen Con first place also gets nationals. But I mean, that that's it. So I mean, if you if you win first place, yeah, yeah. if you win first, yeah, I'm like you got worlds, <laughs> <laughs> right? And, and admittedly, I probably would save money and not go to nationals. But uh, then again, I say that now, if someone said, "Hey, you're qualified for NASA for the guy," I'm going <laughs> for fun. But right. Yeah, so that was the LQ, a little longer than I wanted to spend on it, but um, yeah, just more cases of, like, so this weekend we actually went by the proper rules of, we had 26 players, I think, so we got to cut to top eight. Um, some people didn't understand the cutoffs again, and we had to explain it. Uh, yeah, I'm really wishing it was by attendance, though, because I'm watching all these, like, crazy players who are more than skilled enough to get to nationals and do well at nationals not be able to qualify because you need exactly first place which even the best players can't do every tournament and the more i'm like looking at it it's i don't i don't know how what have you been thinking about this lately at all uh not too much i mean my my two lqs that i participated in the one i didn't even make top eight um and then the other one losing to Lope. Uh, the first one, I want to say it was like 25, 25 maybe 20. Okay. It was like 20, under 30, I believe. And then the second one was in the 30s. I want to say like 34 players or some. How many players played in both, approximately? Played in like each of the two events? Yeah, both events. Like, is um, it all 25 people from the one LQ were at the other one? Plus no, a few, no, no. Or is it like... No, because one was in Iowa and one was in Illinois, so... Oh, sure, that's right, because you guys don't get local <laughs> right. LQs. Yeah, so it was like uh, the Kansas crew, well, at least a portion of them. So mm -hmm. it was, I can't even say it was Kyle Peters. Kyle Peters played in one and Lopez played in the other. Um, okay. Let's see, Aaron Wiseman played in both. I played in both. Um, Patrick and Christina Foglio, they both played in both. So would both. you say less than 10 players, or would you say more than 10 uh, players, approximately? Probably like five to six of us played in both. Um, okay so out of okay so we'll say you had in the 30s we'll say 30 just for a low number mm -hmm. uh that's six people so that's 24 uniques from the second tournament and you said the other one was 25 players so that's 19 uniques from the other so 19 25 plus oh here we go. i actually have it was 35 players and 35 the, okay so the second lq so sorry. say five people were repeats even if it was six people we'll go six people 29 mm -hmm. 29 here then the other event was 25 people you said so yeah, somewhere around there. 29. Uh, so we'll actually we'll go to 25 because that's uh, if we're going to do six count. Uh, so 25 plus 29, 54, if my math is correct. Out of 54 players, how many do you think could compete at a national level? Well, just based on the number of people who were there that were at nationals, I'd probably at least say 15. But and a lot many, of us were And how many LQs at are within, say... <clears throat> a five-hour drive of most of those people uh not very many <laughs> uh you see where i'm going with this yeah but i think we need some kind of clarification on what the point of nationals is is it supposed to be the best player or is that what we're trying to find are we trying to find the best top cut of players for worlds is it only about worlds is it to show off the game is it about is it supposed to be premium or is it supposed to be uh I guess that's a, that's a second question. Is, is it supposed to be a premium thing, or is it supposed to be... I guess it's always going to be premium, because it's, you know, Nationals. It's like our big tournament each year. Right. But are that's, we? Are, why, it, why is it so limited? Why are we only have X amount of LQs? We only have 100 and something people maybe making it. Like, I think there's like, I think there's more LQs this year than last year. That's great. 
But like mm-hmm. the fact that it's not scaled, it seems still seems so absurd to me. Like the fact that you can have a thirty-five person LQ and then someone else can have a sixteen person LQ, or so we'll say eight, because that's like the minimum to fire an LQ or something like that. Uh, at least, unless they're still doing it like last year, where you can have a six person LQ. Like you can't tell me that a turn with thirty-five people doesn't have two people like worthy of going. And the fact that we don't scale it, it's frustrating. <laughs> And that's not, no. I'm not, I'm not even saying this because my friend didn't get in because he took second. He should have, he should have played better. He should have done better, set himself up for mm-hmm. victory. That's a whole different thing. It has nothing to do with that. I've, I, there's people I don't know that take second that I think should go to nationals because they had an X1 record in Swiss and lost exactly to the person that won and that's it. And the fact that nice. we, and like, it, and if the problem is not enough space at the nationals venue, get a new goddamn venue. <laughs> You're, uh, Square Enix has money. Even if right. you want to use the excuse that Hobby Japan controls it or something, and like they're telling you what to do, like the idea that there's it's impossible to find a larger venue in California right. to hold an event like this is absolutely absurd. <laughs> right. So that excuse just doesn't fly anymore. And, and there's even bigger ballrooms at the Hilton. It's not like that's the only ballroom. We use the different ballroom for the sure, first but like, why does it have to it... be that Hilton? You know, like I mean, I can understand that they want it to be that, um, but <laughs> like, like the I, Hilton I... has way bigger ballrooms than the one we used last year. The I... one we used for Nats Year One yeah, held yeah. over two hundred people. And I'm pretty sure if you ask the majority of players who are willing to travel for events, we're not. I mean, you can ask everybody, but I'm talking about people who actually are realistically going to travel and compete. If you ask them, what do they value more? having a larger tournament with everybody with all of the strongest players which again we're assuming that you can at least top an lq you're pretty strong and then if you're at the top one to four we'll say four i can't imagine people below fourth place qualifying from an lq but to even go down that far you'd have to have like 80 people which isn't going to happen like i'm only Hmm. asking for like first second third kind of thing like at the cutoffs of somewhere around like if you go to a cut to top eight two people qualify if you get to a cut to top 16 like you're at like 60 whatever people somehow or even like 50 or 48 like 40 to 50 people at least three of those should probably qualify so then that that last match so then we'd go to a format of like okay so these two people lost these people are playing for first these two people play for the third qualification spot right like a loser's bracket like yeah i definitely definitely agree we could at least go to two players per lq um i think per population like if you have eight people only one qualifies that's fine yeah, I'm pretty sure Europe, when they reached 16 last year, it was either 16 or 24, where two people would qualify at a regional. Yeah. So, so the fact that we and now and now I believe UK Nats, I think UK Nats is just you just buy a ticket to go to now. I don't yeah, think it's even... I I guess we're not allowed to compare to Europe though because their system's completely different. They have a they have a leaderboard system which gets you qualified. Uh, at least sure. to some extent, they have the they have like the grand open circuit they have i i could pull up the little flow chart again but they have multiple routes and yeah we have crystal cups and we have lqs but again lqs are very premium you have to exactly win and that's the only way you are worthy enough to go to nationals and then crystal cups are top four which is fine because by population that would actually fulfill my the requirements that i just said in the previous point which was right because there tend to be larger events, top four. And if anything, I'd be like, all right, well, top three. <laughs> and first, But the whole point is first place goes to world, so the next three people. So it still makes sense. But it, back to my point. If you ask all the people who realistically will travel for events, pay for events, flights, hotels, everything, if they would rather have all the best players there based on you know attendance and LQs and all that, or a nicer-looking venue. Because think about it. You could probably rent out an air – like a – airplane hangar like a warehouse ugly as shit <laughs> doesn't matter it it could have cement walls but if it's big enough to hold 200 people 250 whatever ends up qualifying because we have a set number right there's no way that it's a variable yeah. number based on a growing game or a shrinking game it's completely just based on there's this many lqs so equals x plus four times number of crystal cups and that's it right i believe so yeah so like even if the game grew nationals would be the same size 
And I think that's the biggest, like, if that statement right there is a problem. And the game is definitely growing because, yeah. like, exactly. the re the, my LQ that I won last year, um, it's, what is it, probably about 30 minutes away from the LQ I participated in uh, two weekends ago. It went from 11 players to 35 players, so. Oh, that's pretty good. Like, that's a big growth, but still, like you said, only one person's getting But only play. one person from that region, from that area. And yeah, they can travel. <laughs> But not everybody. Actually, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna say it. No one can go to every LQ, <laughs> especially because right. some of them are in the same days. Uh, it's. It just seems so absurd to me that if if the game is growing and we all agree that by population and by numbers it is growing, that the amount of slots at nationals for that population is not growing. It is a set fixed number. We could have literally a million players start playing tomorrow, all play at LQs and local game stores and make the game boom still 130 players or whatever it is at nationals right and i think the only counter argument to that is that there is more lqs this year um yes but absolutely that is a plus right. yeah that is a plus but like you said i think it, i i can agree that it could go to scaling and maybe that's something we'll see implemented in the future because we've given this exact argument before but the idea mm -hmm. that yeah that, 40 people playing in an LQ in California because there's a ton of players there. There's probably two people there that can go to nationals and do well at nationals. And again, no, yeah, absolutely. It, like, I don't know. Hmm. It absolutely. <laughs> uh, now, granted, I, I guess I would agree that the best player in the room that day is the one that's going to nationals. Um, oh, probably. Absolutely. But, but the second <coughs> best player there isn't too bad to play at nationals. Right. Usually. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, usually no, the definitely. best person in, in in a well-designed game, the best person in the room should win the event. And that's, honestly, that's like wave one, right? Like, all the best players are, that can travel to events are going to win those LQs, get their spots. Then waves two and three are, well, waves two and three of good players. Like, unless, you know, region problems with, like, you know, Jordan Dank, if we consider him the best California, or uh, <laughs> Canadian player, uh, <laughs> out for debate, we don't know. But say he was but they didn't get it a wave one, then okay, sure. This statement doesn't work. But yeah, wave one, generally, the best players are going to get qualified. They're going to be sitting pretty. Then wave two, the next best players. Wave three, the next best players, because they're kind of like one per state-ish. At least that's how ours kind of was, so. Well, just, just no, except for Missouri. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, one per, <laughs> state that, one per state that deserves one, Cody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think we had like four or five LQs last year. I was yeah. getting that. Anyway, I could rant on for a while, but the, my point my point is there like yeah I think... the idea that the, the game is growing we don't have scaling lqs yet or other ways to qualify it just seems silly to me no i, I definitely agree and i think that they could easily add the four more or eight more nationals invites to gen con events i see yeah, no issue in i that. have no idea why gen con is only first place but we've talked about this i think this yeah. will be a third time <laughs> we've mentioned it but That's right. again just reiterating the point that the holy gods of facebook I was aware that there weren't going to be spots when I bought my ticket. Yeah. I was yeah. aware that all the events, when I bought the event tickets, there's no spots. That doesn't mean that's correct. Yeah. <laughs> it just means it's, I read the thing. doesn't mean I yeah. agree with it. <laughs> I can still be mad about it even if I knew what I was buying. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree with it. I was going to say something very similar to that. <laughs> you beat me to it. Uh. <laughs> Uh, but, no. but on outside of that, we got uh, happier time. <laughs> Kansas City's this weekend. That's Kansas your City's that's your neck of the woods. Talk about it. <laughs> yeah, I am. Uh, I will be packing once I finish up the podcast. Most of my cards and everything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, just because since it's within driving distance, I'm, I'll make sure to bring literally everything. So, I mean, uh, even if it's not, I do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'll be heading out tomorrow night or tomorrow when I get off work. So I'm gonna try to make their. Uh, I think the regular locals is on Thursday nights. Mm -hmm. So hopefully I'll be able to make that and then participate in the Friday, like pre crystal cup tournament. Right. Right. Those are always fun. Yeah. No, yeah, absolutely. Try to throw everybody off, play something random. You got to you know. play this mono fire deck, right? You'll need a burn heal after this one. <laughs> <laughs> I would definitely change it up a little bit, a little but bit. Uh, <laughs> I do got the foils. Or play so. some mono Evans. <laughs> <laughs> mono Carmona. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited for that. You're not attending this event? I'm... 
No, I uh, because I had to pay for Gen Con stuff now because prices are going up, and I but I did finally get housing. Um, I couldn't uh, get a plane ticket within two weeks of the event and fly out and all that. All right. So the following weekend will be Sunshine Games LQ, so the one where the Fire Cup was. Uh, like I said, that would be my last chance for Nationals because Gen Con doesn't have Nationals events. Um, and so That's actually another random topic about LQs is I believe they said that no menu that hosts a Crystal Cup can have an LQ. Um, I but now I've seen people that's, that's say that's like... false. I think it was none of them can have a Wave 1 LQ. Okay. I think Just because I noticed the... like Harry Tarantula, they had a uh, Crystal Cup and an LQ, but... Mm -hmm. I just want justice for Missouri. Let's get something. <laughs> justice for <laughs> just, justice for just, Cody's elk. <laughs> literally anything would be cool. <laughs> but I keep hearing on wave one. I heard wave two. That's why it sounds like misery, right? Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so uh, how do you feel about the spoilers that we've been seeing? So, did you see the two from today? The uh, chaos Mobius and the broken standard unit. At least I yeah. think it's gonna be broken. I think they're okay. It seems like a bunch of okay cards. I don't know. I'm... Yes, I know. Cool. And like, I'll try to make bad. it work. Although, if you think about it, right? <laughs> so think about the uh, the colors. It's what fire, lightning, and ice. Mm -hmm. What are the other three that the light card is probably going to deal with? That'd be wind. What is it? Wind, earth, and water. Which combination of those colors do you think is a lot stronger? <laughs> ice <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. you're the asking one that, the wrong the person that, the one that discards a card well see the water earth wind ones what's gonna do it's gonna activate something some a number of things it's gonna draw a card and what's the, the earth one like either pump the team or bring something back or something like that like i feel Probably like so. that one's gonna be so much better although the problem is it's light and light doesn't have camelot ward equivalent but yeah, these cards don't say Yuri or Veritas on them. So. Yeah, they don't. I still, yeah, that'll, that'll probably they'll be cool. Them to get they'll be cool. They'll be cool uh, foils to sit in my yeah. binder. Uh, but what about Lilty, though? So I just found the name of it. That's the standard unit that adds a forward if it blocks. <laughs> yeah, it's, but like, it's a three, it's it's on curve. 3 CP, 7K. It's a standard unit, so there's stuff there. FFCC. Mm -hmm. So there is a searcher for it in Earth. Not that necessarily playing that although you might if you're trying to go with like yuri shenanigans too uh but uh, okay so it gets to block all right let's assume it doesn't block it's a three cp 7k there's a lot of things that can be removed other than like ishtola has a condition galdas has some value on exit but that's a dark card so we don't it's not the same playing field there's not a lot of three cp 7ks that i would say aren't as vulnerable as this card but the potential value of this card, especially in an Earth deck, when you can have things like Anacrow, you can have Ingus. Earth has some of the best special abilities too, right? On forwards, like Vincent. Yeah. Uh, Galoof can be useful sometimes. Uh, I think the... Probably not the Noctis so much. I think there's some interesting stuff that can happen with this card. Yeah, I think it depends on also the skill level of your opponent. Um, because they're obviously not just going to keep letting, like swinging into it. Willingly. Right, right. Or Unless if they do, they it. might they might think that it's only one like value, and then you go like Titan or pump it right, somehow, right. and then it's like okay, well now I get a thing back. I killed your guy, and my dude's still alive. Right. I don't know. I always whenever I see get something back for relatively low investment, I'm like, this card's awesome. Maybe I'm yeah, just... I can see. It. I think this card's just going to be getting hit by Veritas and Glassy <laughs> Labolas. Well, in the sta and also the standard unit, that's not for nothing. I feel like. It could be in like an Earth Wind standard unit type deck with like Ranger, Arc, you can have the Enacrow, and you can just have these big, beefy things. Like you can almost see mm -hmm. Pugilist, maybe. Uh, so, I mean, I could see this being a thing. And also, it doesn't have to be just for S abilities either. That's all. That's where my brain goes because I love the idea of S abilities and the idea of refilling is sweet. But something like bringing back, like, what if you have two Lilties? So, Lilty blocks, get the other Lilty back, play Lilty, and they can kind of like. <laughs> cycle a little bit that's that sounds like a an okay loop um but i think there's better routes to go in earthwind even with that right. being gone i was gonna say Dalum is gonna be banned which completely changes the face of the deck i would think because yeah 
yeah, you can just take out those six cards and put in six other good cards. Like, maybe now people can play Yurian J as, like, two or three of, play, like, three Layak or something really aggressive, or two Layak and another monster of your choice. Maybe we start playing Cobalt Droid or something. I think uh, I could start seeing Wall see play again. Cause... Wall might see play, yep. Because, I mean... Wall, wall is getting neglected. I mean, Wall's deck, like that I'd... card right on the edge, right? Like, right below. Like, you, you always put, like, one or two in your deck, and then they get cut eventually for what we call better cards. And yeah. I could see... Yeah, I could see Wall coming back. Yeah, I, I can definitely see Wall coming back. But it'll be interesting to see if it... I wonder if, like, if a Because, sand... like, uh, there was a deck from Japan... It was Earth, Wind, Chocobos that had, like, Ark, Maria. Uh, then it had, like, it was basically supporting Earth backups, things that search or things that get back or Shantoto. Uh, if they, maybe they didn't play Shantoto. Maybe I'm making shit up. But <laughs> it's <laughs> basically just had these big, giant birds. But it was a standard unit deck, and it had standard unit searchers and stuff, uh, like Sid Hayes. So I wonder if there could be a build there with Lilty. And getting back a thing like a Pugilist, it's just this giant monster, seems pretty insane. Yeah, no, I could I could see it, and I'm sure it buffs the FFCC title deck. I've never really played title, so I yeah I don't know really too much how much experience. they have, but that could be I know obviously if they have get back Yuri, Yuri, yeah, you get back Yuri, you get back Chalinka. I think isn't Leo FFCC as well? Yes, he is. I say because they, they combined all the FFCC video games into one category. Right, right, right. Cause there's so a, there's I a lot. There's a bunch of them. <laughs> yeah, there's six games there, so it's only going to get bigger and better. So. And then actually, I guess, what, oh, what is this card? Oh, that's the 7 CP standard unit that breaks something. So I'm just looking mm -hmm. at catching up. Oh, okay, this goblin I had seen yet. This also came out, I believe, today from the the, the unit group. The YYT? Y, I almost said YCC for some reason. I was just thinking about Crystal Chronicles. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so 2 CP goblin. Oh, this is uh, like a Artonberry. Yeah, it's similar to our Tom Berry where it becomes a forward becomes during a forward your turn. Five K and deals damage to your opponent. You can put in the break zone, draw two cards. Oh, that's pretty interesting, huh? Yeah, I think it's I think it's all right. I mean, it's card advantage. Like and, oh, this is the one I want to talk about. Go go. Little lightning Zidane. I saw the go go, but I I can't think of the effect right now. Okay. <laughs> you have to read it for me. <laughs> Three CP seven K. Just fine. It's on curve. Uh, category six, not irrelevant. Always good. Zero. Colon. Choose one forward your opponent controls. Go go gains his or her action abilities until the end of turn. You can use this once per turn. So if your opponent has a Yuri, you can go mm -hmm. zero, take the Yuri abilities, and now you can just do double activations or something that turn. Or if it has if someone casts a giant summon, you can copy their Ishtola and then sack encounter summon with go go that's just choose a forward right there's no backup or anything like that yeah just choose a forward. oh my god if you choose a backup woof. <laughs> turn turn him into kafka or something just bump i'm just trying to think of like what like so other action abilities I, uh there's a lot of situational stuff like that it's kind of like i think there's a dense enough density of them in decks that it's not irrelevant in basically any matchup i'm trying to think of some where it would be irrelevant spicier your opponent turns a monster like Cactor into a forward. Then you can copy Cactor and gain Cactor's 10k ability. <laughs> There's some really weird stuff that you can do with this card. I don't know if I would ever do that. but <laughs> <laughs> I'd do it just to say I did it. It's kind of like an un achievement unlock type thing. I guess it's pretty bad against Ice Earth. Yeah, that was, oh. that's the one deck I was thinking that maybe it's I like Vice, Vice Kings. I think it's a little too, like uh, I guess, niche would be the word. Where like you're relying on your opponent to have something, it's right. almost like, kind of it kind of reminds me of like the Kamari with Ronso Rage. Like, yeah, I want I want it to work and I want to like <laughs> right. use it, but it's just Here, not, I just like... filtered by any card with a colon that's a forward, so it'll bring up best abilities too. But just scanning for some relevant cards. I think Yuri is definitely the most. Relevant. Oh, Yuri is hundred percent the best target for this. Right. Unless there's like a card I'm really forgetting. Amon could be like cute. Uh, Ash could be cute. <laughs> Dorgan. Exile or something. <laughs> you would still have to remove it, though, correct? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Basically, it, it, if the card references itself, it'll reference Gogo instead when Gogo copies the ability, because it means this card. Mm -hmm. Unless it says card name, then it, then you have an issue. But that is not how most cards are framed. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Uh, Sabin is so. interesting. So you attack with Gogo, right? 
they block with something and they have the Sabin on board, you can copy Sabin's ability to pump while in combat and then pump. I think you might need to have fire CP for that. but Yeah, you would definitely need fire CP for that, but I think it's pretty and, interesting. Yeah. I, I'm kind of, so far I'm a little disappointed with the Opus 9 cards, which I'm sure we'll get some flack for, but... I like a uh, lot of them. Uh, I, I think, think they all seem they're kinda... interesting for deck building, but I agree that they're not. There's nothing yet that's like, oh my god, broken, except for maybe the Shadow Backup. Yeah, see, and even that, I don't even remember what that does off the top uh, of my head. 2CP Backup, then it has FF6. an ability that you can only, yeah, FF6, fire 2CP. Pay a fire CP and dull it and sacrifice it. Choose a 4, deal it 8k. You can only use this if one of your things has died this turn, one of your forwards. I was going to say, there's got to be some huge restriction if it's fire. <laughs> but that's not even a huge restriction. That's like, okay, I swung with my little dude into your 10k, and now I finish off your 10k with my 2CP backup. I mean, I mean that's bad, but like you could easily, or you could trade too. Like I, It doesn't say only during your turn. So on defense, uh, you can just go you know, block, trade 8k to 8k, and then you can just sack this, kill another 8k. Mm-hmm. And then presumably play another one or something. And it's a six, so it already slots into the fire ice deck that oh gee, that deck needs more removal. <laughs> like it seems pretty good. Yeah, I think I think it, it could see play. Um I think that deck would probably cut Yotsuyu, right? I would not, no. No? Too good? No, I I don't think I'd cut Yotsuyu. Or unless you're playing like or Red Mage, whatever. You choose to play out of those two, like make them unblockable. Um Ooh, okay, wait, real quick. I think I found another relevant active or action ability uh pour them oh yeah that's they go to like Keep scholar or something Keep and you go to and you get to copy it and stop their scholars so they could lose their board or whatever yeah but i feel like if you're already in water you're going to be wanting to play pour them at max anyhow sure it doesn't become a copy of pour them it just takes their ability right they but... Get it too. <laughs> <laughs> but no I, I think i think we they have a lot more to show us uh a lot more in store for opus nine I don't think we've seen a lot of the good cards yet, so. Estinian. Activate Gogo. -Go. It can attack again. <laughs> <laughs> That's. I mean. <laughs> loose, yeah. I know. Yes, it sounds yeah, pretty there's good. Some cool, there's some cool stuff, but yeah, there's not, nothing besides, like, Yuri. I don't think there's anything particularly broken that card's going to copy, but there's a lot of interesting things potentially in the future that it could copy. Yeah, if you can get Yuri and you're on five backups. Yeah, I, I, like, I think your opponent should have already removed the go go, but say you just play it from. Yeah, if you like, play your if you play from your hand, go go with five backups. Yeah, I mean, yeah but then again, the, you could, deserve what's about to happen to you. <laughs> they could also dump to play go go and then have, then you'd be like, oh shoot, they have that. Oh yeah, that's what I mean. If it's already on the field, like because you said yeah. they should have dealt with it already. Right. I don't know. It's an interesting card. I think a lot of the cards so far have been. I think there's a lot made. of like niche cards where they'll have to find a particular home. They're not just, like, universally useful. But, I mean, yeah, like, I Regis so. is very good, right? Like, the, yeah, that's he just probably... searches Noctis and all the other Earth cards for that Mono Earth deck. Yeah, I like I like him, and I don't know. I'm interested to see more of the FF15 stuff, so I'd say Regis is probably my favorite card still so far. Since Ooh, Airborne Trooper. This poor started coming. Standard unit, it cannot attack. When a mm -hmm. forward other than Airborne Trooper enters a field... It loses all abilities. Oh, that's interesting. So you play something it can attack. 3 CP, 8K. It block. won't make the cut. <laughs> <laughs> Typo title deck. <laughs> I don't know how you fit that card in. So but... out of all the stuff... Wait, you've seen the Golbez though, right? The Golbez? You didn't know there's a new Golbez? Uh, maybe I did. All right, this will be the last one we talk about that, unless you have anything else you want to bring up. 5 CP, 9K. Lightning from 4. Warlock. Action ability. Lightning, dull. Reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a forward, put it on the field. Oh, yes, this I do know, but no mind. Only use this during your turn. S ability. S and two lightning. No dull. Choose a forward. Doesn't have to be active. Doesn't have to be dull. Deal at 9k. Pitch another Golbez. Copy this ability. Mm -hmm. So for two Golbez and two light. So for 6 CP and the. Well, two, four. Yeah, for 6 CP, kill 9k two things. Right. This card is sweet. <laughs> I think it'll bring back some, like, Golgamesh. Oh, awful. yeah. It's uh, very like, interesting. You could play like, it with like, Yule and Yuri, or, uh, Yuna to, like, see the top cards. You could play it with, like, this actually, like, with Strongest Sword, could see maybe a 6 or 9 backup build with, like, a couple summons. And then you just don't play the 6-drop Golbez anymore. 
you just become like this control value deck that is the new this Golbez alongside the strongest sword Gilgamesh. Oh. And then you get to play you can go back to playing Ingus with like beefy standard units. I think this card's very interesting. And obviously I'm yep. biased because I love those decks, but it, it, it <laughs> seems interesting. to be powerful. It doesn't cost six, it costs five, which is sweet. Yeah, I could see Shane Shane Duckworth spiking oh, yeah. an LQ with this. He's, uh, he's gonna nidhog people off the top all day. Just boop, calculating <laughs> nidhog. <laughs> <poof. laughs> yeah. Or like uh or even Milo or any like even you, like the like Golbez lovers out there. So <laughs> Golbez lovers, yeah. Yeah. That is what we are. I used to be there. It. Until Opus 3, I gave up. <laughs> um, but no, I think it's interesting. My favorite card probably outside of Regis that's been spoiled is maybe the Laguna that searches an ice forward. It's just 3 drop 8k, yeah, essentially. Because it's 5 CP, 8 searches an ice, right? <laughs> yeah, so it's interesting because some people want a sale for the search, but like the backup slots are so packed already that you don't want to play her. Yeah, I so can't make room having for a sale. forward that's like a, it's a decent body. Like ice guys aren't normally that big, and the fact that it searches makes it reasonable. Especially if you need like a clutch like Genesis or Kuja to win the game, you just go like, all right, let's go find it. <laughs> like, right, seems pretty good. That's probably my favorite, my two favorites so far. Um, but like I said, I expect a lot more out of Opus Time, and I'm sure Square will deliver. Yeah, because I mean, if you think about it, we're getting all the content creator spoilers primarily, plus the couple of cards that Kageyama or RB have spoiled. <laughs> so it's uh we have heroes and legends yet to come last year at the kansas crystal cup is when we got thornton and i remember that getting revealed and i was like wow that's pretty nuts <laughs> yeah. um so maybe we'll wake up saturday morning right. and see something see something crazy santa um, came down the chimney left us some nice gifts <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much how it was we woke up in our hotel room and they're like there's a card that ex versus search anything i'm like what <laughs> what's its element water i'm like oh okay. <laughs> of course it is yeah Right. Well, ice doesn't uh, need anything more. So, <laughs> Donalum is getting banned. That's your. That's what ice gets this set. That's right. That is right. <laughs> Great. But yeah, I look forward to seeing everybody uh, this weekend in Kansas. Sam is still coming, correct? Yeah, yeah. Sam, Sam is okay. coming. On. Yeah. So me and Sam will be there. Unfortunately, Zach will not be able to make it. Uh, yeah. If anybody wants to come out, and say hello. We will be there. So. Flying especially to see though. you. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're going to see Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I think that about wraps us up for this week, guys. So as always, thanks for listening. I'm Cody Snodgrass. And I'm Zach Burrell. We'll see you next time. Hey, everybody. Thanks for taking the time to listen to the Chuck Bros podcast. Be sure to drop us a like and comment on our Facebook page or subscribe and comment on the YouTube page. If you have any comments and suggestions, especially about Cody's awesome hair, feel free to drop us a DM. And of course, don't forget to check out CardiVillies.com and use promo code Chocobros to get 10% off your next order.